Hello everyone, this video is about how to homebrew beer from a pre-made kit. Okay, homebrewing beer from a pre-made kit. Um, first of all, I'll say that if you have ever brewed before, um, if you know anything about brewing, uh, then this video is probably not going to hit the mark for you, but really I just want to talk about how easy it is to brew beer at home uh, using a kit uh, and how cheap it, it is and how, how few steps uh, there are to actually doing it and how many hours you actually have to invest, which isn't very many. So let's go through and I'll talk about all the things that we need. First of all, you'll need a brew kit. Now I've chosen the Festa Brew brand, and this is a pale ale. Uh, and in this box, there's a little bit of yeast and a large bag of wort, pre made. Um, I've used these kits many, many times with great success using the method I'm about to show you. Next, you'll need a primary fermenter, and I have a 50 liter pail here. Next, you'll need some kind of sanitizer, and I have uh, Diversol BXA, which is a chlorinated trisodium phosphate, um, and it goes by many different names. You can get it under a brand name called Be Bright. There are also many different types of sanitizers, for example, sodium metabisulfate, um, and you can even use water with a bit of bleach in it. That would work. And lastly, for this first step, you need some kind of a measuring jug, uh, and I know that that green canister is uh, two liters when it's full. Brewing beer from a kit really takes place in three main steps. The first step is primary fermentation, the second step is secondary fermentation, and the third and final step is bottling. And I'm going to take you through each of those processes step by step. Okay, so let's get started by taking a look and seeing what's inside this box. Inside this box, we have a large bag of worts, which is pretty hard to get out, so let me try and do that. And at the bottom of the box, are some instructions and inside the instructions is a bag of brewer's yeast. Okay, inside this bag is 23 liters of sanitized, even sterilized uh, wort made in the brew factory, the brew house that created these. And this cap is clean, sterilized, and uh, free of germs at the moment. And the yeast that we use if I can't get that, is a Safal, or I don't know how to say it, um, Brewer's Yeast Strain 4. And this is designed for uh, an ale. In order to get started, we really need to work on sanitizing our equipment. So I really need to sanitize this pail, the lid, and the opening where the, the work comes out of. That's our very first step. Let's watch that process. Firstly, I'm going to take one heaping tablespoon of this sanitizer and put it into my pail. And I prefer to use more rather than less. The amount is, uh, is good as long as there's too much. If you have too little, it's an issue. And then I'm going to use four liters of hot water. How does my sink will make it? And I'm going to use my measurer two liters at a time to mix that. Uh, for Americans, that'll be one gallon. One tablespoon of that to one gallon. And there we are, four liters. And when I'm done, I'm going to throw this in there as well. Okay, so then I'm going to take this solution with my jug, and I'm going to pour it around all the sides of this container. I'm going to turn the container so that I can get it every side. Okay, then I'm going to reserve 
some of this and take it out and pour it into my lid. I'm going to fill the whole lid up. Okay, and the next thing I need to do is make sure that this lid area has been re-sanitized. And I have a tool that opens this, and I just like to use a butter knife, so I'm going to sanitize this as well. I'm going to take a paper towel and get it wet, and I'm going to wipe that knife, and I'm going to take the pep and wipe all the way around the top. Okay, and all of this has to sit for about five minutes, and during that five minutes, um, re-coat the inside of the bucket with uh, the jug. Okay, so after the 10 minutes, it's important to know that this sanitizer is not a food safe sanitizer. It needs to be completely rinsed off. So I'm going to use my sink and some hot water to rinse all the parts where the sanitizer was. So let's watch that. Now that the sanitizer has been rip, uh, rinsed off, it's time to open up the bag of wort and pour it into the primary fermenter. All right, the cap is a little bit hard to open, so I really need to grab it around the neck and make sure that there's no wort underneath so when I open it up, an uh, air bubble forms in there. So I just kind of stick my knife in and pry it open. And you can see the air sucking in, and that's what I want. Okay, so I'll take the lid off and when you pour it into the bucket, we're looking for a rough splashing pour. Uh, so that's good for right now and nowhere else in the, in the process. But here we go. Make sure you get all of the precious wort into that bucket. You can see after that pour, the wort's very, very foamy. And that's a good sign. Next comes pitching of the yeast. Now, pitching yeast is just a fancy word for throwing yeast in there. Uh, and normally the directions would be to soak that in some warm water to let it rehydrate. And I've done that before, and it works. I also found that actually just sprinkling the dry yeast onto the foam works just as well without any of the extra hassle. So let's just sprinkle it on there. After that, put the lid on. Now we're kind of done for the first step. Primary fermentation takes three to five days, but it's at this point, if you're using new equipment, that there's a chance to make a mark on your equipment. You can see on the bottom of this box, it says that there are exactly 23 liters, or six US gallons, in that bag of wort. So with my wort filled to the top, you can see that I've made a little mark here on my bucket at 23 liters. So I know that when I fill this up to that point, I have exactly 23 liters of liquid, and that's important for me in some of my sanitizing processes later on. Now this wort and yeast mixture has to wait for three to five days uh, before we can move on to the next step. And it's important to know that this being a semi-transparent a container, it can't be stored anywhere that it's going to see UV light. UV light damages the work and the fermentation process. So one thing I like to do is uh, take some garbage bags and just put them over the top of it. And because they're cheap, I use two. Now this can be stored in a closet in a hallway at room temperature, somewhere close to 18 to 20 degrees, and come back three to five days. Okay, so it's been five days, and here we are with our um, primary fermenter, and let's take a look at what we have. Take the bags off. So you can see in our barrel, the, the level hasn't changed, it's still exactly at 23 meters, but there's all this um, crud or stuff that's on the inside of the container. And at the bottom, there's a layer of sediment. Um, and let's open up the jar and, and see what we see. And you can see at the top, there isn't anything floating up there really, it's some small bubbles. 
um, and that's good. And along the side, there's that sediment that seems to have dried up there. We call that a Krausen ring. And what I was looking for on the top there is to see that there was nothing floating on the top uh, in a big, thick layer um, that would indicate that fermentation is still really going on. So now that I know that most of the fermentation has, has completed, it is time to rack this over into a carboy, a big glass carboy. Just like this one. And I've gone ahead and washed it inside and out, and now it's time to sanitize it. So watch that process. So like last time, I prepared some sanitizing solution, and I'm just going to pour it inside. times across 10 minutes and then we'll give it a rinse out. Okay, it's 10 minutes later, let's uh, dump out the sanitizer and give it a really good rinse. some of the other pieces of equipment that we'll need. We are going to need a uh, six foot length of clear racking tube. We're going to need some kind of a siphon. And we'll need an airlock with a rubber bung that will go on the top of the carboy. So I'm going to sanitize all of this stuff. squished in there. I'll come move it around and come back in 10 minutes for that too. It's been five, five to 10 minutes for the hose. Time to give that a rinse as well. It's really important to not let that touch the sink. So we'll try and keep it in the air for this. It's really quite hard. Okay, so here's our sterilized equipment, the siphon, J-tube, the uh, Krausen protector, or the sediment protector, uh, we've got our airlock and bung, and our siphon tube. Okay, in order to start this process, you need your wort and fermentation bucket higher than your carboy so that gravity can fill it in there. Um, and I'm going to crack the bucket to try and prevent as much sediment or dust or mold from going in there. And I'm going to slide my siphon in at an angle towards the back side at the bottom. Okay. And to start the siphon, I pull up on this. And when I push down, beer will come shooting up the cane. I just need a container to put a bit of beer in first. The first little bit of beer will have water and maybe some sanitizer, so I just put it into another container to stop that. So, here we go. Now when 
I start to siphon, I don't want this splashing around, so I want my tube at the bottom so that there's no air being added to the mix. And we'll just let that go. As it starts to get close to the end, I like to stick a block under here to tilt the liquid back, and that's why I stuck the siphon at the back corner over there. So that's what it looks like. It looks like this. And it's all finished. Okay, the last thing to do before taking this and putting it back into storage is to take a bung filled with sanitizer solution to protect any more germs from getting in there. And that's all there is to do. This goes back into the place where you stored it for the first um, fermentation and it sits seven to ten days, even up to two weeks. And we'll see you then. After the siphoning is done, you should take a look inside the bucket. It is amazing in there. At the bottom, there's this sediment slash sludge, which is leftover dead yeast, active yeast, and the products of fermentation. Um, and during the height of fermentation, this would have all been floating on top of the wort. Um, and that's, that it's on the bottom, we know that most of the fermentation has finished. If you see it floating on the top, you need to let it rest and keep fermenting for a day or two more. Now on the side, we have this ring of real crud. And we have to take this chance right now to wash this, otherwise it gets stuck on there like cement. So we'll watch the washing process right now, the cleaning process. We racked over our beer from the fermenter into the carboy minus a day um, and because tomorrow I intend to bottle um, I need to clean and sanitize my bottles and I haven't switched to kegging and I don't use big bottles I'm still uh, putting them into individual 330 mil glass bottles which is a pain in my butt um, and they're really hard to clean um, so I like to do a little something it's probably a bit extra um, but let me show you I take my Car, or my primary and I have a mark 23 liters and I'm going to fill it up um, with sanitizer. So uh, I know that 20, 24 liters will be six of these tablespoon scoops so I'm going to do that. And I have my utility sink here and I'm going to fill it up with the hottest water I can get. Four 
liters of solution, I'm going to carry this into my second bathroom. Okay, in here I have the solution I just mixed up, and I have all of my boxes of beer bottles. And so one batch makes 60 to 65 full bottles. Uh, and that's a lot of bottles to clean, and they've been sitting for a while, so who knows what's inside. Some old sediment, maybe from previous brews, um, dried beer, and some have labels on because I've never used them before. So what I like to do is I like to fill up my bathtub with this mixture and soak all of the bottles on overnight so that the labels come off, any crud inside loosens up and just comes off. So let's just watch that process. <laughs> are fully submerged in the solution and they're completely empty of air. It's only water and the solution inside. I'm just going to let them sit. Usually I'll let them sit overnight. Uh, a few hours would probably do it um, just to loosen up all the crud inside. When that's done, I'll come back and I'll show you how to wash the bottles. Well, here we are. It's bottling day and we've got all of our bottles have been sitting in the bathtub overnight and they're a soak free of all of the hard crusty things that might be on the inside and any labels that would have been on the balls would have come off very easily. So what I need to do is spray them all off using the shower head and then I transport them into my bottling area on the other side where I blast the inside of them with a bottle blaster. So let me do that. <laughs> Let's blast some bottles. After I wash the bottles, I put them on this bottle tree to dry. It's a little rack. Take a look. Okay, on bottling day, mostly everything stays the same. I've gone ahead and sanitized all of my siphons and hoses and my buckets, which you've seen before. Uh, but one thing does change in terms of sanitization. Uh, I need to sanitize um, my beer caps, 
and anything that touches the beard today, and I'm not going to get a chance to wash it off. Um, so I have used uh, this product here. It's called Star San. Let's see if I can get Star San. It's a no rinse product. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I mix it according to instructions and put it in a spray bucket and I spray all of my bottle caps before I start. Um, and another piece of equipment that you haven't seen yet is this bottler. It attaches to the end of the siphon hose and it has a spring-loaded nub so I push it into the bottom of the bottle and it lets the beer flow out. When I pull it out the beer stops and it just is really really fast for doing multi-bottles. Of course you don't need any of this equipment, the beer tree, or the bottle tree, the, the bottle filler and um, it just makes it easier. So I'll take a look at the next bit. Okay, so I'm going to lay out 65 or so bottle caps, and I'm also going to spray my capper with the sanitizer. So take a look. Okay, and then I liberally spray them with the sanitizer. and the beer cap or two. Okay, so I'm ready. I've got my carboy that's been sitting two weeks up high and my bucket that I'm going to drain into down low. And the reason why we're going to rack it over from here to here is this. Come take a look. After two weeks, there's a layer of sediment that's fallen out of the beer, which has made the beer much clearer than it would have been otherwise. And we don't want that going into the bottles, so we have to rack it over into another vessel. Okay, so just before we rack over the carboy into the, the final vessel, these kits require that you add in a priming sugar to make the beer carbonated in the bottle. And the instructions ask you to use dextrose, which is a corn sugar, in the amount of a cup to a cup and a half, depending on how much carbonation you want. Now this is an IPA, so it can deal with uh, a little bit of carbonation, but not too much. Uh, it asks for one cup of boiling water, which I've previously done. And one cup of dextrose, and it's so amazing how this just dissolves in there. Give it a little stir. JK and when I push down it'll come pumping out of the my bottle filler and push. Good and the first bits come out and now I'm ready to rack over. And before I let the flow start I'm going to pour in my dextrose solution just to the bottom so as it's swirling it'll mix with all of the beer as it racks over. Okay, with my bottle filler, it's really easy to fill the bottles. I just push it in and I fill it up to just uh, where the neck starts to get really thin. the other half off camera. I'll see you when that's done. 
So there we are, that's everything. I got 67 bottles out of that batch, which is uh, about as high as you could expect. Um, and I just want to drive home the, the reminder that it's best to do a very thorough cleaning right now after you're done with your equipment. It doesn't need to be sanitized, but make sure it's clean. It's so much easier to do it when it's wet. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw um, of this kit brew, please hit the subscribe button and check out my other content. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Bye.